Hello everyone, my name is Leah and welcome to my channel and this very impromptu reading vlog because I just got an email and I saw the email when I was on FaceTime with my friend earlier tonight and the only thing I saw in the preview was the name of the person who sent it that I didn't recognize and the words in need of a comfort read and I was like oh that's probably like a book promo email so I'll just check my email later I don't know what that is and I just checked my email and the full subject line was in need of a comfort read here's your early access to one last stop I swear to god my heart like stopped for a second and I was like wait wait do I have one last stop and then I opened the email and it said, hello, it's been a stressful time and year and many of us are turning to books for comfort and escape. Yes, it's very stressful right now because hopefully this video will go up when we actually know the results of the election and everything, but um, I am in perpetual election anxiety right now and it is bad. So yes, I need this. To that end, I hope Casey McQuiston's One Last Stop will help you find some much needed joy, hope, and love. Below is a neck galley widget for you to start reading tonight or whenever you need a moment away from the real world. I can read One Last Stop right now! I'm gonna cry just over the fact that I can read this book right now. I don't know how many of y'all are um, anticipating this book, but I have read Red, White, and Royal Blue four times this year because it is a huge comfort book for me. And I was literally telling my friend the other day that I really want to reread Red, White, and Royal Blue right now because it is my comfort book and I'm so anxious, but because it deals with an election and literally the 2020 election, although different candidates because it's like a fictional alternate universe of our world, I just don't think I can read it right now. And now I have Casey McQuiston's other book! I have been wanting an arc of this for so long. I'm gonna cry! I wonder how much crying on camera I'm going to do in this vlog because I have the feeling it's going to be a lot. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to end up reading tonight. I kind of want to just like read this in one sitting, but I have work tomorrow so I don't know if that would be a good idea. But I also haven't been sleeping well anyway so maybe I will stay up and read this. I don't know. I have one last stop! Y'all. It's real. It's real. And I have it on my Kindle to read. I have the arc to read on my Kindle. Yes, my Kindle is currently charging because it was dead and as soon as I found out that I had one last stop, I ran to get it and plugged it in because I read Red, White, and Royal Blue for the first time on this Kindle and now I get to read one last stop for the first time on my kindle i'm dying already i have not even flipped past the cover look at this beautiful cover yes it's in black and white because it's on my kindle oh my god i just started reading and literally just got to page one and i have tears in my eyes this is gonna be a crying vlog hello i'm only about nine percent into the book according to my kindle but i wanted to give a little update i'm enjoying this so far there are some things about the main character that I super relate to and then some that I don't and I can't wait to find out more about her as a character. I just love that she's 23 and I'm reading this when I'm 23. I really really like that and it was mentioned in the book that the main character August had a vintage crime novel in her room. By the way, this will be a non-spoiler vlog, especially since I'm going to upload it before the book comes out and things might change between this and the finished copy and I don't really want to spoil the book when, you know, it's not out yet. But I don't really think saying a small detail like this is a spoiler. But the main character August had a vintage crime novel in her room and I want to know what crime novel. Casey McQuiston, tell me what crime novel August had in her room because I need to know because I took two detective and mystery fiction classes in college. I need to know what book it was, Casey. Please tell me. Casey, tell me the mystery novel secrets, please. There's a mystery element to this book and I didn't know? This is a romance and mystery? Casey McQuiston really knows exactly what I want. Also, the sapphics have met. I am excited. This book is fun so far. I just got to a scene that was just really fun. Also, I really want to eat food at the diner that August is working at. I just 
really want to go there and eat food for some reason. Maybe it's all the descriptions of food and maybe it's because I'm hungry, but I want to go to that pancake diner and eat pancakes. Now I really want pancakes. It's 11.30 p.m., but what if I made pancakes? I'm hungry and my sleep schedule is messed up anyway. I might make pancakes. Y'all really just got to see that decision process play out on camera because I was not going to make pancakes before this and now I think I'm going to make pancakes in a little bit because I am hungry. I think I'm going to read a little bit more of the book first and then I'll make some pancakes or something else. I don't know yet what I'm going to eat exactly. Also, I just want to mention that I think one of Casey McQuiston's strengths in books is their cast of characters that they create. There's just always like really fun side characters and good relationships with side characters and things like that. And I feel like even side characters that aren't on page for that long, I still feel like I know them and feel connected to them. And I'm getting that already in this book and I'm only at like 18%. So I imagine that I'm going to get even more side characters and more connection to side characters and I'm excited. Also, I feel bad that this uh, vlog background is just going to be probably my bed and the wall behind my bed this whole time because I'm going to read a good chunk of this book tonight. If I end up not finishing it tonight, I will probably finish it tomorrow, which means I can actually do some reading outside. But I also don't want to film outside because then people will see me talking to the camera and stare at me and I don't want to deal with that because the other day I went outside to read and I took a book with me that I wanted to take a picture of next to the tree because it had trees on the cover and some lady saw me like bending down at a really weird angle and taking photos of a book on a tree. I don't want any kind of repeat of that so I will not be filming myself reading or vlog updates outside but maybe I will go outside and read a little bit. I also have work tomorrow, so that could also affect things. I'm not sure yet. All right, I'm gonna get back to reading. I just got to a scene that just made me smile so much. This book is just like making me happy. This book really is doing a great job at making me happy and giving me an escape from everything else happening in the world right now. Um, I was just, I was just like grinning so much. I love this book. This book is just making me so, so happy. I love these sapphics. This book. These sapphics. I am trying so hard not to spoil this book for this vlog, but there's things that I want to talk about so badly because these sapphics I I just this book is excellent this book is just it's so good I can't wait to read the finished copy when it comes out I'm not even halfway through this and I'm already like I want the finished copy I mean I've wanted the finished copy for a while but this book I just got to a little past 50% and I really want to keep going. I really want to keep reading because I'm really enjoying this, but I'm so tired. It's already really late because I started reading pretty late because I got the email around like 
6.30 p.m. But I didn't actually open it until several hours later, so I started reading pretty late. And I'm very tired. If I didn't have to work tomorrow, I would consider just like taking a really short nap and then finishing the book tonight. But um, I have to work tomorrow and I'm already not going to get enough sleep. Not because I stayed up reading this book. I mean, I did stay up reading this book, but I would have stayed up anyway because my sleep schedule has been messed up lately, so. But I think I'm going to go to sleep pretty soon, so I'll have to finish reading this tomorrow. This book is really making me want to listen to a lot of music because there's a lot of music mentioned in this book and I wonder if anyone has made a playlist of like all the songs mentioned in this book because if not I think I want to go back over the book and figure out every song that's mentioned so I can listen to them because some of it is music I've heard before but a lot of it isn't and I'm trying to expand my music taste recently anyway so this would just give me more to expand. This book is also making me want to watch the movie Say Anything because it's the main character's favorite movie and I have never seen it, so I kind of want to watch it now. But yeah, I might just finish the chapter I'm on and then go to bed because I'm exhausted. I will for sure finish the book tomorrow though. Hello everyone, it is the next morning. Please excuse my wet hair. I just recently took a shower and I did a little bit of reading this morning, especially while I was eating breakfast and I'm now at 60% of the way through the book and this book, it's very hard for me not to spoil this right now because there are very specific things I want to talk about and scenes I want to talk about and lines I want to talk about and just... I can't wait until the book gets published and I can read the final edition and maybe do a updated spoiler reading vlog of this book. I don't know if I will do that, but if that is something you are interested in and you are watching this, let me know. I just really enjoy this book and the more I read, the more that it's really cemented to me that what Casey McQuiston does so well that I love about their books is the character work. They have really good character work and I feel like I know all of the characters in the book. Sometimes I feel like side characters aren't nearly as fleshed out. And yes, they're side characters, so they don't need to be as much of the focus, but I love flesh out side characters, and that's something I feel like this book really has. As it goes on, we get even more about the side characters, and I love that. I'm just getting really emo about these sapphics. I love them so much. But I have to actually get to work now. I'm working part-time, so I'm working a few hours today. So I won't really be doing much more reading before the end of work. I do have a couple short breaks, so I might get a few pages in. But I will update again later today. Hello, I'm off work for the day, and I've done a little bit more reading of One Last Stop. And it's so good. I'm not really sure how else to talk about it right now, because... I can't say that much without spoilers, but I just love all the side characters. I love the main character. I love August so much. I love Jane. This book is just so good. And these sapphics are just so good. We're also getting to what I think is going to be a very exciting part plot-wise. I don't really want to say more than that because of spoilers, but I am very excited for some of the stuff that's about to happen. I'm kind of hungry so I might make myself a little snack and then I think I'm either going to go for a walk or do some reading outside and I will definitely be finishing this relatively soon within the next couple of hours so I'm excited. This book has got me crying. I mean I'm also a crybaby so that's part of it but this book has got me crying.
these sapphics are making me so emo. I can't wait until I can read a physical copy of this book and like tab it up and make comments and stuff. I just need a physical copy so much. I just love these characters so much. I have less than a hundred pages left and I just don't want this book to end. It's just like giving me such warm fuzzy feelings. It's just making my heart so happy. So during my last reading vlog, my glasses broke and these are my backup glasses, but now if these break, I have no glasses and I need to see. Without glasses, I really cannot see. And I recently got a new prescription anyway and needed to get new lenses soon. So I decided to get a new pair of glasses, but because of COVID, I don't really want to go into a store and try on glasses. I found a website that will send you a few pairs of glasses to try on and those arrived today. So I figured why not try them on in the reading vlog? So here we go. There are five pairs of glasses and there are two that I'm kind of leaning towards more, but I'm going to try all of them on. And if y'all let me know which ones you like the best, that'd be great because I'm having a hard time deciding. So leave a comment down below and let me know which glasses you like because I have to return these in a few days, but I don't think there's a set time I have to order the one that I want. And also I'm hoping to have this vlog up in a couple of days. So this is a slight break from the sapphic. I apologize if you just came here for one last stop. Now you're getting subjected to me trying on glasses. Also, please excuse me being unable to see for the next couple of minutes because these are not prescription. They just have like fake lenses in them. So I will not be able to see for a hot minute here. So this is pair number one for the video. We've got a nice rose gold frame. I think these kind of reflect a lot, but I'm pretty sure all of these glasses reflect a lot. The screen is very blurry right now. All I can see is like myself and a glare on the glasses. Here is pair number one. Pair number two. These have a bit of a thicker frame, but it's like darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. I feel like I don't like really dark frames all around because like the ones I was wearing before, these, the glasses I already own, I just feel like I don't look as good with like all dark frames because I'm so pale, but I don't know. Then we've got pair number three. And honestly, when I picked these out, I thought I was going to hate them when I tried them on, but I wanted to try them and I kind of don't hate them. I kind of really like them. And these are actually kind of the ones I'm leaning towards. There's another pair I'm also leaning towards. I probably shouldn't say that because I don't want to influence y'all's opinion, but I really like these. They're like very reflective, so I don't know how that's going to be for filming, especially because I want to get blue light glasses. Then we've got pair number four. These are another rose gold frame, but like bigger. I don't know how to choose glasses. Maybe watching this footage of me moving around with these glasses will help me choose. Y'all help me choose. I can't pick glasses. But I kind of feel like these and the other rose gold ones have a little bit too much of like a cat eye going on. I just don't know if that's something that looks good on me. I don't know. Let me know what you think. On to the last pair, pair number five. These are another pair that I was afraid I wouldn't like, but on my face, I kind of really like them. The ones that I'm really leaning towards are either these or the thin framed silver ones. I think a thicker frame like this would be sturdier, but I don't know if a thicker frame is like what looks good on me. So let me know what you think. But I kind of like the brown of these frames and I feel like it goes with my hair well. I don't know. So a reminder of the numbers, if I can go in the right order, this was number one, these were number two, these were number three, these were number four, and these were number five. Now time to put back on the glasses that make it so that I can actually see. <laughs> oh, it is nice to be able to see again, hello. All right, back to the regularly scheduled sapphics. Please let me know which glasses this sapphic should get. This book is just so funny. Like there will be, like a couple pages ago, I was about to cry, I was so emotional, and now I'm laughing. Casey balances like heavy emotions and humor so well, and it just makes the book so enjoyable. And that's also part of what I loved about Red, White, and Royal Blue. These sapphics. 
August and Jane have my entire heart. I just... I knew I was going to cry over the suffix, and here we are. I'm crying over the suffix. I know logically that, like, everything will be okay because this is a romance book, and they usually end, like, happy, and there's always, you know, stuff that goes wrong before everything works out in the end. But I am so nervous. <laughs> I am so nervous that everything won't work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I wrap myself in my blanket because I am in distress. I am in distress here. I am in distress. Casey, why would you make me feel these? Casey McQuiston, why would you make me feel these emotions? I am in distress. <laughs> I just, I don't have words right now. I don't, I don't have words. I don't, I don't have words. I, I don't have words. I just, why would these sapphics do this to me? I am upset. I am upset. God. <sighs> Look, before I started reading this, I knew I was probably going to cry like this reading the book because Casey McQuiston makes me cry, but like, why? <laughs> I recorded myself crying and then stopped crying and then picked the book back up to the part that I had stopped at because I was going to record myself crying and now I'm crying again. Casey McQuiston, stop making me cry. <laughs> now I'm like sad crying and happy crying at the same time about different things. This book has got my emotions all over the place. I feel like I can't say anything right now because if I say anything about the book right now I will probably accidentally spoil something so y'all are just gonna have to deal with my crying face so I finished the book I think I've been crying for the last like 20 to 30 minutes of the book I am a crybaby that is where we're at if you've read the book and you cried tell me but also people probably read this book and don't cry I just cry very easily I don't know let me know if you've read the arc of this if you cried because I cried as y'all very well just saw I think I will form some more coherent thoughts about this book later and do a little bit more of a wrap up to this vlog but um it was excellent I'm giving it five stars there's also a huge element to the book that I haven't really talked about in the vlog that is in the description but I also know a lot of people don't actually know about it and I know some people kind of want to go in not really knowing anything so I'm not going to mention what that is because I know for a fact that my friend RC does not want to know what it is so I'm not going to say it but you can look it up in the description and just that on top of like the contemporary romance was excellent so good it just added such an interesting element to the book and i'm sorry i'm being vague but i said i wasn't going to spoil things and technically it's not a spoiler because it's in the description but like i said some people don't want to know so i'm not going to say what it is but it was so good this is definitely a book i'm going to be rereading i want a physical copy to like hold in my hands and read and mark up and i can't wait until the final book comes out Except it doesn't come out until June 1st. That's a whole more than seven months away. I have to wait almost eight months for a physical final copy of this book. I love these sapphics. Also, the main character is bisexual, and I love her so much. August, 
I love August. Also, I love Jane. <sighs> I just, I love these girls so much. I love them so, so much. Yeah, I'm probably gonna form some more coherent thoughts later and do like an official wrap up because my emotions are all over the place right now. I am emotional. What a book, what a book, what a book. I'm just, ah. When will the tears leave my face? Hello friends, it is the next day and I have some more kind of compiled thoughts that I want to say about One Last Stop. I know I'll end up posting this reading vlog and review and then end up thinking of other things that I wanted to talk about, but I'll talk about a lot of things now and hopefully I'll get a chance to talk about more stuff later. One of the first things I kind of want to talk about is I feel like a lot of people are going to compare this book to Red, White, and Royal Blue, which makes sense because this is Casey McQuiston's second book, that was their first book. This is another romance from them. And I think it has some similarities to Red, White, and Royal Blue in that it is written by Casey McQuiston and because of that, you know, it balances characters, romance, sadness, and humor very well because that is something that Casey McQuiston does very well and because this is another Casey McQuiston book, it does that. And this book, like Red, White, and Royal Blue, is a book that I love and a book that I can already see is going to be a comfort read for me. But other than that, they are very, very different books, and I love this book for different reasons than I love Red, White, and Royal Blue, and I'm just very wary of people coming into this book expecting Red, White, and Royal Blue, and expecting those characters, and expecting that story, and it is a completely different book with completely different characters that tells a completely separate story. And I just think it's really important for people to see them as separate things because I think anyone who comes in wanting Red, White, and Royal Blue 2.0 is going to be disappointed because this is not that book. This is its own thing. And I'm so glad it is because I love it so much. I just kind of wanted to get that disclaimer out of the way because I am just afraid that people are going to say that. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. With that said, I want to talk about the things that I loved about this book because honestly, I don't really have that many criticisms or like any criticisms. The only even thing I would say is that it's a little bit slow to start but like I didn't care. Like that's not a personal criticism, that's just me saying I think some people might find this book slow to start. I was fine with the pacing, it picked up as it went on as most books do, I was totally fine with it but I just feel like that's something some people might think so maybe go into it expecting that. This book is just such a good representation of being in your 20s. The main character is 23, the love interest is in her 20s, most of the main side characters are in their 20s, there's just so many characters in their 20s and I feel like this book just captures the feeling of being in your 20s and not really knowing what you want to do with your life and kind of being lost and trying to find your place in life and find your people and like find your purpose like I just feel like it reflected that super well and I loved that aspect of it so so much. Speaking of the main character being 23, the main character August is 23, bisexual, sapphic, and talks about having anxiety and I'm like, Casey McQuiston, did you write this book for me because I am a 23 year old bi sapphic with anxiety like there were just so many things in this book that I could relate to and of course there were a lot of things that I couldn't relate to and I loved the balance of that there was so so much I could relate to and so many things about the main character that were also different from me and I just I just loved it so much Casey McQuiston really said I'm just going to give Leah everything she wants that's what they said that's really what happened here also, Casey McQuiston was like, and we're going to add a little bit of a mystery element because I know that Leah loves mystery and she literally did her English major capstone on a mystery book. We're going to do that for Leah too. Like, thank you, Casey McQuiston, for giving me everything. Thank you. Another thing about this book is the found family. Like, <sighs> the found family aspect was just so good. I feel like a lot of times when that trope exists. It is my favorite trope, by the way. The found family trope is my favorite trope. I feel like a lot of the times I see people talking about it, it's in like fantasy novels or sci-fi novels or things like that. And I think there are definitely contemporaries with found family, but the fact that this was a contemporary romance with such a strong emphasis on the found family made me so happy. 
And also to see that in a queer contemporary romance and have this just lovely queer found family was just so good to see. And it really hits hard as someone who is queer and in her 20s and like, I don't know, it just, it just hits so hard. The found family made me so, so happy. And they're just this group of chaotic queer friends who find each other and make their own little niche family. It just makes me so, so happy. Another thing I want to talk about is just the sapphics in this. I just love both of them so much. I love August. I love Jane. I love them individually. I love them together. There are just so many little tiny details about their characters and about their relationship and I want a physical copy so I can tab it up. I want to tab this book up so much. I feel like this is going to be my most tab book after Red, White, and Royal Blue. I just want to tab so many so many things. I want the physical final copy but I want a physical arc so badly too. I just want to tab it up. I want it in my hands. Another aspect of this book I really loved was the focus on music. There was so much music mentioned in the book and there were like bands mentioned, there were genres of music mentioned, there were specific songs mentioned and I'm wondering if anyone has made a playlist of all of the songs mentioned in this book because if they haven't I will probably do that at some point. Because, um, I've got to admit, I'm already thinking about a reread. Because, like I said, this is going to be a new comfort book for me, just like Red, White, and Royal Blue is. Like, I've read three books this year that have become huge comfort reads for me, which is Red, White, and Royal Blue, House in the Cerulean Sea, and now this. So I'm already thinking about doing a reread. So I think if I do end up doing a reread, I'm going to write down all the songs mentioned and the bands mentioned and things like that. I'm just so, so happy that this book exists for sapphics to read especially you know sapphic young adults like me who can really really relate to the characters in this book it just makes me so so happy that this exists and i am so happy that i got the chance to read an arc of this book and i am so thankful for the publisher for sending me an arc of this it really did completely make my day when I got the copy, I was in total shock. It took me like an entire minute to process the fact that I actually had the book and I was going to be able to read one last stop and I still didn't really think it was real until I actually had it downloaded on my Kindle and then I was like, I have this book. And there were even times I was reading it, I was like, am I really reading? my most anticipated release of 2021 right now. I don't know if y'all understand how excited I was for this book. I can't remember if it had been announced before I read Red, White, and Royal Blue. I read Red, White, and Royal Blue January 1st of this year. I don't remember when One Last Stop was announced, but I found out about it I think soon after. I was so excited because I loved Red, White, and Royal Blue so much and then Sapix. And I remember the day that the cover was revealed on Twitter. I got so excited. I just started typing. I was so excited. I sent like an all caps message to a group chat I was in on Twitter and I was trying to type one last stop. But I got so excited that I typed like um lat stup. And my friend RC made this Photoshop cover of the book that made fun of my typo. And now he uses that typo title all the time because of my typo that has now been immortalized forever. I can't believe I really got to read this book. I feel like a lot of the other thoughts that I would put into this review have kind of already been said by me in the reading vlog, so I won't really say that much more. Because if you've gotten to this point in the video, I'm sure you've seen the rest of the video, so you already know a lot of my other thoughts. But the one last thing I really want to talk about is the dedication to this book. And obviously this is an arc, so I guess quotes aren't final, but I don't know if the dedication counts as a quote. But the first part of the dedication reads for queer communities past present and future and this book just felt like such a love letter to the queer community and it very much was a love letter to past and present queer communities and it just made me so happy just the presence of the queer community in this book was beautiful and amazing and now i'm going to cry about this book again this book just made me so happy and queer readers deserve books like this that emphasize community and sapphic romances with found family and queer characters and I did not mean to end this video crying and apparently that is where we are because that's 
pretty much what I had to say in my final thoughts. I'm sure I'll come up with more things to say about this book later, but for now, those are my final thoughts. I really, really did not mean to cry in my like wrap up review of this, but that's where we're at. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read this book, please comment below, talk to me about it. If you haven't, let me know what you're looking forward to if you want to read this book. I'm just so, so happy to have gotten an arc of this as a sapphic reviewer when this book means so much to me now. If you've gotten to this point in the video, please leave me a little like, is there like a metro subway related emoji, like a little train or like something? Leave an emoji like that in the comments down below. If there isn't an emoji like that, just leave me, I guess, a pink heart because the cover of the book is pink and it made my heart so happy. Thank you for dealing with my sapphic tears over this sapphic romance. Alright, thank y'all for watching and I'll see you later. Oh, now my Kindle's flying open. Please stop. Okay. My Kindle really locked just as I was going to read from it.